Hey there everyone, I'm Jake James Lugo and welcome to the channel. In the world of fighting games, Marvel vs. Capcom is viewed as one of the greatest crossovers ever made. The superheroes of the Marvel Universe clashing fists with the all-stars of Capcom has always brought about legendary levels of hype among fans. Whether you were playing in the arcades with your friends or in the comfort of your own home, Marvel vs. Capcom really got your blood pumping super fast. But a lot of things have changed drastically over the years and the beloved series may not be what it once was back in the day. However, if we're really going to talk about Marvel vs. Capcom here, we're going to need to do this right. So I'm going to need to call a friend. You know what that means, people. It's crossover time. Here comes a new challenger! Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Big Daddy Top Hat here, the fine specimen who runs the Top Hat Gaming Man channel, which regularly provides historical coverage on a cornucopia of consoles, a bounty of beat-em-ups, and most importantly today, a feast of fighting games. I am a true content connoisseur, and when it comes to Capcom crossovers, I am your man. Oh yes, people, it's me and Big Daddy Top Hat Gaming going up against Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite in a tag team review, no less. So get ready, peeps, because the two of us here are about to take you for a ride. Yeah. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite is the sixth mainline entry of the Marvel vs. Capcom series, released in 2017 for the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Infinite was a big turning point for the series because it was far removed from the fighting game golden years of the 90s, and it was released in a landscape of entertainment that was very different from before. Marvel properties were split up between different companies who owned various rights to certain characters, so it's much harder to reuse different heroes that were big names in previous MVC games. However, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite still tried to include the fast-paced gameplay that everyone loved and mixed it together with the current trends that were going on with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This was a mixed bag for a lot of people, including myself. Unlike Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, however, which had a lot of hype and excitement six years prior, the response to Infinite was lukewarm around release, and things only went downhill from there as time went on. I have to admit, when it came to the Infinite roster, I was very disappointed. I felt it was extremely short-sighted of Disney to leave the X-Men out of the game, especially when you consider the first crossover game in the series was X-Men vs Street Fighter, and the whole crossover franchise has been built on from there. What is more frustrating about it is that Disney had the license to do so, but stubbornly left the beloved characters out of the game simply as they were attempting to dilute the X-Men's presence at the time, due to Fox having the movie licensing rights for the franchise. I guess by weakening the X-Men, they probably thought they could gain the movie rights for cheaper in the future. But this is a prime example of Disney cutting off their own nose to spite their face. I get locked! Just shut up and go to sleep! Good. Perfect! Oh, that one got me! Nowhere to hide. My gift to you. Okay, so like everyone else, I wasn't a big fan of the roster that we got in Marvel Infinite. It just didn't really make any sense to completely exclude characters that were from the X-Men and Fantastic Four franchises. The reasons themselves were so obvious to everyone why it was done, even though Capcom never really explicitly said for like such a long time why that was. People who have played Marvel vs. Capcom over the years had a lot of those characters from those series in their teams, like especially the top tier ones. And now they were just completely shut out. They had to find other characters to substitute for all the ones that they lost, which was a real bummer. The new characters that we got were pretty interesting additions to the overall roster, but they can never really replace the likes of like Wolverine, Doctor Doom, Magneto, Storm, my waifu, uh, Psylocke, the other waifu. It's like, that's never gonna happen, like why? And let's be real, it didn't really help on top of that that the visuals of the game were significantly inferior to Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. This was just so bad that all the different updates that we got to the game, especially after the beta, were made to actually fix a lot of that stuff because of all the feedback and the backlash that they got from fans. Everything just felt like a big step backwards, which is a real shame. But am I alone in this top hat? I mean, how are you feeling about all of this? I really hate to be a negative Nancy. But I despise the graphical style used in Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. 
when you compare it side by side with some of the earlier games. The sprites used in Marvel vs Capcom 2 have a timeless appeal that looks like they all could have come straight out of a comic book. Infinite on the other hand features bland polygon models made to look like actors we would see in a Marvel movie rather than another media source. All in all it just looks uninspiring and less fun. Well let me ask you guys, does that all really matter if a game still plays good and has a lot of solid content? Is the gameplay of Marvel vs Capcom Infinite still hype like what we remember? For anyone that played the previous MVC games, there's a lot that you'll recognize here. The core fighting is very similar to the first Marvel vs Capcom game, but with a lot of the speed and the technical aspects from later games in the series. This means that you only get to choose two characters for a team, but you could still come up with some crazy combos and clutch strategies. Every character has a large assortment of special moves and hyper combo attacks that are both very flashy and over the top. Some characters are much easier to use than others, but in the hands of a very skilled player, anyone on the roster can do some real damage. I really like how the controls are simple to get into like previous games. Despite the large movesets of some characters, you're still using limited buttons and directional inputs to execute special moves. It feels very similar to playing Marvel vs Capcom 2 overall, despite being a completely different game. The complexity of the fighting comes from how and when you execute certain moves, especially in high level play. Mixing things up here is the addition of the Infinity Stones. Yep, they actually included this because of the Marvel movies that were happening in theaters at the time. Before a match, you could select one of the six Infinity Stones for your team. You could pick the Space, Time, Power, Reality, Soul, and Mind Stone. Each one has different effects and abilities to use during a fight, which adds a new layer to the meta during matches. This is a cool change that really makes Infinite feel very different from previous titles, but I also think that the Infinity Stones make balance in the game a big issue. Certain character teams paired up with certain stones could definitely dominate matches in the hands of the right player, leading to a few one-sided skirmishes. In terms of the gameplay, studying my own comment section when providing coverage for this game, my own audience appeared to really enjoy the Infinity Stone mechanic included in this title. From my experience, the overall fighting in this game is pretty solid and delivers most of what you would want from a game in the genre. Although I feel scaling back the fighting from 3 on 3 matches to 2 on 2 was a bit disappointing, as it somewhat dilutes the chaos that the franchise was famous for in the first place. Yo, Dante! Hmm? Out of ammo. Can the ladies come out to play? For you, Rocket, anything. Be good. Ebony, Ivory, care to dance? So while I do enjoy playing MVC games, I think that they're very fun with friends, I have to admit, I never really got competitive with them back in the day. They just honestly didn't click with me in the same way that like Street Fighter or The King of Fighters or Mortal Kombat or Tekken did, at least for me back then. However, I still think that MVC is still super easy to get into for just about anybody, despite being incredibly deep and complicated at some of the higher levels of play. I always felt that the special move inputs were really great since they were so simple to do. There's a lot of quarter circle motions with one or two buttons alongside them, but it doesn't get more complicated than that, at least, you know, for most of the Capcom Versus games. I guess that's because the quarter circle motions and the double quarter circle motions are really easy to do during a fast paced game, especially when the camera's like moving all over the place and things are going crazy. If you've ever seen any of the big combos that happen during tournaments and other big events, you know how incredibly devastating these things can look. And trust me, those things are not easy to pull off during a game. They are really tough, but they are really satisfying. With all that being said, some of the big things about Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite back then were the single player content and the online multiplayer modes. But looking back at it in hindsight, did all this turn out very well or for the better? Well, if we're being honest, kinda not really. Spoiler alert, it wasn't marvelous whatsoever. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite tried to follow suit with other fighting game series of the time by adding a real story mode to the game. We never really got a story mode in previous MVC games. No real explanation given to why Marvel and Capcom characters were fighting each other. Unfortunately, this is where the game significantly stumbles hard and falls into mediocre territory. Without getting into too much spoilers, the plot is just bad. The worlds of Marvel and Capcom are becoming merged because Ultron and Sigma team up after deceiving Thanos and Mister's death to retain the reality and the Space Stones. 
The two merge together into one being known as Ultron Sigma and start causing all types of havoc between both universes. This is when we see the heroes of Marvel and Capcom already working together to stop Ultron Sigma before they mess up reality. I like seeing the different characters from both companies interacting with each other, but everything just feels so lifeless and shallow. I should be excited to see Mega Man and Captain America team up, or Thor fighting alongside Sir Arthur, but it's like Capcom only took the most basic bullet points of getting everyone together and left it as is. Nothing more interesting or exciting beyond that. It should be cool to see Spider-Man and Rocket Raccoon joking around with Chris Redfield and Dante, or Chun-Li talking with Iron Man and Captain Marvel. But what we get here is so deadpan in its delivery with no emotion in every single line that's given throughout the story. The plot should have been much more epic and awesome, but what we got here feels like absolute trash. I have little to say about this game's story really. Let's just say it's more fun and entertaining to sit through the Star Wars Holiday Special than get enjoyment out of the story mode in this game. At least the Holiday Special gave us Life Day and we got to meet Chewbacca's family which is more than Disney or Capcom have been able to offer us with their storytelling of late. I have care, Commander Redfield. These were once my people. Even now they fight well. This was my home too, Thor. Ultron Sigma is going to pay for what he's done. I honestly don't think I could say much more about the story of this game. It's just really bad and significantly below par than what I expected for a Marvel vs. Capcom game in terms of excitement anyway. And if I'm being honest here, the other game modes aren't really enough to make up for how lackluster this story is, at least for me. I mean, yeah, we got training mode, challenges, arcade, and online multiplayer modes, and that's fine. But for most people who aren't planning on being competitive with Marvel Infinite, this is such a huge disappointment. It can be super difficult to judge a fighting game in a series that's really focused more on gameplay than anything else. But Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite was heavily advertised for its story mode and the character roster and all these other things that they were injecting into the series for the very first time. So for me, it just didn't live up to the hype whatsoever. Even the online multiplayer mode was such a hit or miss, especially if you just couldn't find matches that were stable against other people, or if like me, I just got completely mismatched with people that were significantly much more advanced than what I was. I was just getting absolutely destroyed. It's just all these different things working together or compounding upon one another that really deflated the fun factor for me, which is such a huge shame after the reception that Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 was. Again, that game was pretty darn good. And at least, you know, myself and anybody else would expect a whole lot better from Capcom. Whilst the gameplay found within Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite is perfectly adequate, the game lacks soul and feels like the ultimate greedy corporate merger rather than the ultimate crossover. The X-Men and Fantastic Four's absence and the big push of characters Disney were most interested in using for upcoming projects tells you everything you need to know about this game's purpose. So after all of this, can we honestly recommend that you play Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite? In my personal opinion, I would say no. This game just isn't as good as the previous titles in the series. It's great to see Capcom bringing in a story mode and other new elements to Marvel vs. Capcom, but when it's done so half-hearted, what's the point really? Even the post-release downloadable content was halted after a short time. We only got some bonus costumes and a few extra characters that should have been in the game from the start. Nothing else beyond that. I know some of the reasoning for this could have been due to the issues during development and behind the scenes between Marvel and Capcom, but I can only go based on the final product in front of me. And real talk, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite should have been a whole lot better. But what about you, Top Hat? What do you think about this? Little effort was made to appeal to the long-term fanbase of the crossover franchise, and more was done to pander to Disney's corporate aspirations of making this title appeal to the largest audience possible which in turn alienated long-term fans. The best way of summing this up is considering it the game and equivalent of the Star Wars sequel trilogy. Screw the fans, let's try and get a bigger new audience, which we all know in this game's case simply did not happen for neither Capcom nor Disney. I will take everything by my hand. And there you go, everybody. That's our tag team review on Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Of course, I could not do this alone without Big Top Hat Gaming. For real, thank you so much. Big props to him. If you guys haven't already, you should definitely go check out some of his stuff. So, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed my short but sweet input on today's topic. If you look at my channel, Top Hat Gaming Man on the Information Superhighway, 
you will be able to watch individual documentaries providing coverage of every single game in the Capcom vs series, plus plenty more content covering gaming's fine history. If you find me through this video, be sure to let me know in my comments. I promise I will greet you personally. Yeah. Thanks again, Top Hat. Super appreciate it. But anyway, guys, as always, with any game that I review on this channel, that's just my opinion about it. Let me know what you think about Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite down below in the comments section. Tell me, are you a big fan of MVC Infinite? Are you a fan of any of the other MVC games? What are some of your other favorite versus games from Capcom or any other company out there that's done like versus or crossover style games? Talk to me about some of them, or at least give me some good recommendations down below in the comments section. Hey there everyone, thanks for watching this video. I appreciate all of your support as always. On the side here, I have some game reviews and other cool videos you might like to watch. Make sure you leave me a comment down below and subscribe to the channel too. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to be in the know when I post up new videos for you to check out. I'll talk to you all again real soon. Peace out and stay epic everybody.